fools and just get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Sing hallelujah. So in this video, I'm going to read some things that I wrote down here that may help you uh, with dinner music and special announcements and the anniversary dance. So you can pick which dinner music you want or I will just play a mix. If you want to pick the music, you can either send me individual song titles and we will put them down on your timeline or you can just let me know some of the artists that you like or style. So like this past weekend, she said she wanted uh, light country background music. Okay, always best to keep the volume on the low side during dinner and try not to compete with guests trying to have conversations. More than once, I've had event sites or caterers complain to me about other DJs and bands about them trying to get all their guests riled up during dinner and playing too loud and engaging them. So <clears throat> what that does is it throws off their dinner service and can really stop them from being able to do the, their own job for the night, which is to serve people their dinners. And usually it consists of multiple courses. Um, so the more you as the DJ or band can help them out and help them be successful in what they need to do, the better. Okay, any special announcements? Uh, the best time to make any special announcements, in my opinion, is, whether it be somebody's birthday or anniversary you want to point out, or about uh, how and where to sign the guest, guest book, or maybe you have a photo booth and I need to announce where it is and what time they will be there until, um, is before I announce that dinner will be served or that a server will be around to invite you up to the stations if you're doing a buffet. So right before I do that and I start playing music um, is the best time, I think, to make any special announcements like that. And then I want to mention the anniversary dance, the one where I invite all the married couples up to the dance floor and make each sit down according to how long they've been married, starting with the shortest and ending with the longest married. A uh, really good time to do this dance is in between courses, actually, say the salad course and the main course. If you're doing a buffet, you can't really do it this way, but for served courses, I'll explain why this works well here. So number one, it kind of warms people up to the idea of being on the dance floor. So hopefully later on in the night when the dance floor opens, they're already familiar with it and it'll be more, they'll be more inclined to come on. Um, number two, there is downtime sometimes in between courses. Depending upon your caterer, this can be a transition time and a time in which we can take five minutes and not let your guests get bored. If I am going to do the anniversary dance, let's say at this time, I always run it by your caterer first um, and make sure that it's okay. Number three, the reason why it's best to do here uh, versus during dancing is that it actually does the exact opposite of what you want the dance floor to do during dancing. It takes people off of the dance floor. Whereas during dinner, that's kind of what we want. We want people to end up going back to their seats at which time their main course will be coming out. And finally, towards the end of dinner, sometimes I like to start taking the volume up a bit and maybe playing songs that have a little more bounce to them uh, just to start warming people's ears up for the dancing part of the reception. Nothing over the top, but something very subtle, perhaps. Okay, so let's say dinner's over. Uh, usually at the end of dinner, if you haven't done it already, then we're going to do your cake cutting and your parent dances. That'll be in the next video.